So now from all the theory to some more practical application, I think there are two, two uh, indications mainly. That is uh, diabetic uh, macular edema. And the second one, and uh, that's what we are doing a lot, is for central serous uh, chorioretinopathy. And I will uh, present you some data on our uh, experience on, on this disease. So in CSC, you have got a serous uh, retinal, <coughs> uh, you've got a serous detachment of the neurosensory retina due to a, a choroidal dysfunction and uh, also an RPE dysfunction. And on the one side, you have an acute disease with often uh, spontaneous resolution of fluid where you don't have to treat often, but you often have uh, really massive amounts of, of, of uh, detachment, like these examples here. But then the, the disease can also turn chronic, and then you have got uh, permanent vision loss with uh, extensive RPE changes, as shown here. So what are your options? I think in the beginning, of course, you can wait. Stop steroids, that is uh, proven to, to help. But all the other medications I have proven either uh, have, could have a negative effect, like, for example, steroids, or without any effect at all. We have also no really good uh, experience or, uh, with uh, mineral corticoid receptor antagonists. Anti-VEGF, I think, only works if there is a complication of, of the CNV or the patient is misdiagnosed. I think there is some overlap between the uh, CSC and AMD. So I think anti-VEGF only works if there is maybe uh, the wrong uh, diagnosis. So laser argon was used before, but it, it makes cars. So basically, we are left with two options. And um, in my experience, both are, work in some patients. And I think it's, it's worthwhile doing both afterwards. So the, one is, the first one is photodynamic therapy, which is a treatment option in some patients if it doesn't work. And uh, uh, the second one is micropulse laser. So usually, we first perform micropulse laser because it's, uh, it's easier to do. If the patient doesn't react after two, um, two treatment sessions, we then try uh, photodynamic therapy. The, um, we do the treatment uh, with, uh, based on ICG, and we um, try to identify uh, areas of hyperfluorescence <coughs> that we then uh, treat densely, and we, we usually set a power of about 50%. So you titrate in an area outside, and lower you, and so you wait, for, you look until you get a small effect, and then you go down with your power to 50% of that. It recently it turned out that some patients that are resistant to therapy with this protocol, we, we go up, up to 75%. And we have been quite successful in some patients that didn't react uh, with 50%. And we still haven't seen any, um, any scarring or, or, or effects in any imaging modality in the course of the, um, of the control examinations, although we've done now more than 100 different patients. I will give you a short uh, overview of some of our first experiences uh, that we retrospectively um, analyzed. We, we did uh, 38 patients with chronic cases. So you see the disease duration was uh, on mean four years. So we had uh, patients there with a, a disease duration between four months and up to 90 years. So it's not the ideal group of patients where you want to see uh, really a positive effect. But nevertheless, at the last follow-up, which was around five months after the, the treatment, we had 24% uh, 24 24, 24 of patients a dry macula. In 50%, we observed an improvement. And in 26, we didn't see any change, that is, which is also due to the fact that this is are really chronic cases. And then but if we saw no improvement, we then later on changed to PDT. But what's interesting is here that some patients were, were treated before with PDT, and 61% of, of them responded to laser with a decrease in central retinal thickness, although they didn't show any response in PDT. So I think there is a, a certain group of uh, patients that responds to micropulse, but there is also a group that doesn't respond to micropulse, but to PDT. So I think both treatment options are... are uh, should be considered. The central retinal thickness uh, re was reduced from 400, more than 400 micrometers to 287, and visual acuity also increased, which is somehow surprising given the low, uh, the low, uh, the long uh, disease duration. You see here some survival curves, and the first one on the uh, on the left shows the um, the reduction of the central retinal thickness, so basically the morphological response. Uh, 
um, in, in terms of time. And you see that basically most of the patients responded very quickly. So you s usually if there is a, a good response, you see that quite fast. But on the left B, you see the, um, the response in terms of visual acuity. And you see there's a time lag. So what we usually observe is that you first see drying up of the, the macula, and then some weeks later, sometimes then uh, the, this recovery of vision. And this is an example of a patient that we treated. So it was a 44-year-old male with uh, a lot of um, serous detachment. We treated him. We identified two spots that we treated with micropulse, as shown here. And um, a couple of weeks later, the visual acuity had increased to 0.6. And uh, the central macula was, was dry, but there was still a pocket at, uh, at the arcade that we then again treated again with micropulse laser. And then in the further course, also this pocket had dried up. But what you can also see, although the, we didn't treat the center, or the center wasn't getting drier, you see that there is still an improvement in visual acuity in the course. So it was from 0.16 to 0.6 and now 0.8. So, um, this is a typical cause of the disease that we see, um, the recovery of, of uh, vision then uh, later on then, uh, rather than the, the morphological recovery. So in summary, uh, in my opinion, the macropulse laser is a, a safe and efficacious treatment option in patients with CSC, and you should, can even consider it for very long-standing cases or for cases where, uh, with treatment failure after PDT, although this doesn't mean that PDT is not good. It only means that there are some patients that react to one of the treatment options in a better way. Thank you.